In this video, we're going to complete example 1. We're going to sketch the following linear functions using the gradient intercept method. So we'll start with question A. Our function is already in gradient intercept form. I'll just remind you what that looks like. Y equals MX plus B. We can see that M or the gradient is 2. We can also see that B or our Y intercept is negative 3. So we'll start by labeling our y-intercept of negative 3. Looking at our y-axis, we're going to label negative 3, which is our y-intercept. That gives us one of the two points that we need to draw the graph. To find the next point, we need to look at our gradient. Now we're faced with a bit of an issue here, because for gradient you need a fraction. We have a whole number. It's really easy to fix that. I'm just going to put our whole number of 2 over 1. Now it's a fraction. Our gradient will always be represented as a fraction where the rise is at the top and the run is at the bottom. Now our rise will always be either an upward or a downward movement. We have a positive number, so this is going to be an upward movement. Our run will always be a movement either to the left or the right. When you have a positive number, it's going to be a movement to the right. So we're going to move up two squares and then to the right one square. We'll start at our point here and go up two squares and right one square. That now gives us our second point. Once you have your two points, you simply draw a line that passes through them. All right, let's now look at question B. We have y equals negative x over 3. So I'll just write down our gradient intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Now you might notice that there doesn't seem to be any number here for b. And that means that we're technically adding zeros. So our y-intercept is zero. I'll have to show my working out for question B below question A. So we'll write down that our y-intercept, or B, equals 0 this time. What about our gradient this time? Well, you might remember that x is the same as writing 1x. So we actually have the fraction negative 1 over 3 in front of x. So our gradient, the symbol for which is m, will be negative 1 over 3. Looking at our y-axis, we want to label our y-intercept, which is at 0 this time. Once again, our gradient is always represented in the form rise over run. Now, what do we do in a situation where we have a negative? Well, that negative needs to go in front of one of the numbers, either the 1 or the 3. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'm going to take that negative and I'm going to put it in front of the 1. That means that our rise will be a downward movement this time because we have a negative. Our run is positive, so this will be a movement to the right. So starting at our green point, we're going to go down one square, and we're going to go to the right three squares. That gives us our second point over here. And then we simply draw a line that passes through these two points. Now some of you might be wondering, what would have happened if we put the negative in front of the three instead of the one? Well, I'd like to encourage you to complete question B and put the negative in front of the three. Once you've done that, I would like you to compare your graph to mine. Anyway, we need to move on to question C now, so we'll start with a blank slate. You'll notice that our function is not in gradient intercept form. So what we need to do is we need to do some rearranging. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides of the equal sign. This will cancel the 3x on the left. This will give us 5y minus 5 equals negative 3x. I'm also going to add the 5 on both sides in order to cancel the minus 5. 
The reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to isolate y on the left. I'm now going to have 5y equals negative 3x plus 5. Lastly, I'd like to divide by 5, and I need to do this to every single term. This will cancel the 5 in front of the y, so I get y equals negative 3x over 5 plus 1, because 5 divided by 5 is 1. We can now see that our gradient, or m, is negative 3 over 5. And our y-intercept, or b, is going to be positive 1. So we'll start by labeling our y-intercept on our y-axis, which is positive 1. Remembering that our gradient is in the form rise over run, I need to choose where I'm going to put the negative. This time I'm going to put the negative next to the 5, where we have our run. Our rise is positive, so this will represent an upward movement, and our run is negative, this will represent a movement to the left. We're going to move up three squares, then to the left five squares. So up three squares, and to the left five squares. One, two, three, four, five. We now have our two points. All we need to do now is draw a line that passes through these two points. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.